In January of 1973, under the guidance of Professor Kenneth Bruffy, Brooklyn College opened one of the country's first college peer tutor writing centers. Bruffy wrote, open admissions forces us to perceive the relationship between the social and political context and learning itself, indeed, even knowledge itself. Students learn individually or in groups, collaboratively, and with a foreseeable, meaningful purpose. They learn from tutors, from each other, and learn by teaching each other. In 1977, Bruffy assembled a writing tutor manual, co-written with 13 writing tutors. One of those co-authors was Annette Shirtle. I just love to know a little bit about your background. So what was your family like when you were growing up? Um, I was a daughter of immigrants. Both of them um, came here. Um, I was the older of two, two daughters. We were, um, my parents uh, scraped together money and, and they built a, a laundromat and dry cleaner. Um, and I uh, had to help with that. And um, I qualified, I guess, for other colleges, but I think the idea was I just had to stay close to home. Um, went on to get a journalism degree from NYU later, a master's. I also made a teaching degree while I was at, um, at Brooklyn College. And I ended up um, working for a while at Brooklyn Tech High School, uh, which is one of the three um, high schools in the city that you, you have to pass an entrance exam. Uh, I taught English there, in fact, writing um, freshman comp. Now, when specifically did you work in the writing center? I believe I started in the writing center, most likely after I finished that first semester. So I guess it would be maybe January of 75, that would have been then. I think all freshmen had to take freshman composition. So that was compulsory. So I guess I started with that. You know, I think you take something like 15 credits in, in the semester, is that, if I remember correctly. Um, and Bob Nelson was the instructor. Um, we had to provide papers to him. Um, I guess we read them aloud, spoke about them, critiqued them, from what I recall. Um, most likely there was a grammar book involved. Um, and then um, that's when he approached me. I think he had spoken with probably Ken Bruffy. Uh, maybe Ken Bruffy was um, kind of soliciting for um, peers, I don't know, or tutors. Uh, so that's, that's how it happened. Um, I kind of wanted to discuss some of the things that you talked about in your essays, um, which were, were fantastic. Um, in your points of view essay, The Proper Atmosphere, you say, I have stumbled upon what I think is the most important contribution the peer tutor can give to her tutee. A lesson in grammar? Help in organization? No. The best way the peer tutor can help the struggling student is by maintaining a relaxed and warm relationship with them. So can you just expand upon that, your mindset, your thinking, what that know. meant to you? Well, I think it's just common sense. I, I don't think that I was taught that. I just think it's how I feel now. You know, now I'm dealing with patients. Um, I always, they also think I talk too much sometimes, like I educate <laughs> Um, um, about, but I think it's important people are, are familiar with themselves. And um, I think that from a personal standpoint, I know that if I'm nervous, um, you can't perform well. So, um, you know, by, you know, having someone that you want to excel at something, you're trying to help them get over it, you've got to make sure that the person uh, takes down all the barriers first. Well, now you also say in that essay, the student becomes so obsessed with the idea that she is incapable of writing that she actually does become incapable. In these cases, I have found that once the tutor breaks through that feeling of tension by chatting informally, the student is able to loosen up and his thoughts flow more freely. I thought that was super, that, that was an interesting take. Can you kind of expand upon that? Yeah, I think that it just comes back to the point that, um, you, you know, you need to be, um, maybe that's a little Brooklyn thing too. <laughs> you just have to be um, relaxed with things and it flows better. Um, and, you know, obviously if you're just frozen or paralyzed with fear, um, you know, it's not going to be conducive to giving 
all you've got. So um, I guess that's what I was thinking at that time, I, I think, I don't know. So now I wanna just touch on, you know, one more of your quotes. Um, this is one that I personally know I, I can relate to as a peer tutor um, from your essay, Giving Into the Student Helpful or Harmful. You, you um, begin to discuss, and I'll just read the quote. Um, I like to think that Sylvia learned a great deal when we worked on her art paper that day. She saw that she had a skill and that it could and should be developed. She became more and more enthusiastic and she was able to set aside her negative attitude towards writing. I know that I deal with students like this, this type of situation, at least on a daily slash weekly basis. Mm -hmm. So can you just talk to me about that experience that you had as a, a writing tutor with, uh, with a student like Sylvia? It's very hard to look at somebody else's work and you wanna be polite and you wanna be encouraging. Um, and you, but sometimes you feel like you just wanna write the whole thing all over again because it's such a mess. And, and you can't do that. You can't do that as a tutor. Um, it, it's not right. Uh, it doesn't help the, the person trying to be helped. Um, so I think that uh, one thing is when you get over that uh, paralysis of fear or that idea, that negative kind of thinking, um, you know, it allows um, more of the talent to come through. So that's probably um, the yeah, story with Sylvia there. She thought she couldn't, and she ended up being able to. So, yeah. So, what was the writing center in the T1 building like? It almost looked like um, a little barracks kind of building. Um, like was just put up. Like uh, it wasn't. It wasn't really a real building. It was just something that they could easily a prefabricated kind of thing that they put up on the side there. I remember and there were like, like these sofas all over um, and there usually was an older, maybe a grad student who kind of mentored or um, kind of stood there, at the, sat there at this little desk and, and we would just um, accept our, our students and go to one of the sofas and sit one on one with them. Um, yeah, it's very relaxed atmosphere. Yeah. It's almost so, in your living room. <laughs> so it wasn't like across a table. No, or anything formal. No, 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 not at all. It was very, very low key. From what I remember, very low key. Wow. Yeah. So I hear, I hear you also mentioned you said so a senior, in a way, ran the center. So mostly it was freshmen who were tutors. Um, I, I think undergrad, and then maybe the grad student is the one who kind of ran things there, or acted like a mentor in case. What type of clients did you see coming in and out? Who was most frequent? You know, just things like that. I, I think the um, most of our our, our two two T's um, were those freshmen incoming students. Um, maybe they didn't do too well back in high school, and now they had to pass this compulsory freshman class, and and they just couldn't do it. Ken Bruffy, what can you tell me about him? at all in the way that you experienced him? Like the, um, wasn't there the professor and Mr. Chips, good boy, Mr. Chips or whatever. He was very, very professor-like. And these like little horn rim kind of glasses. He was very nice, he was very low key. Um, that's what I remember him, very, very nice, very mild mannered, um, passionate about writing. Um, and I think, um, you know, we, we talked, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I guess we did meet with him after. We did meet maybe on a regular basis, maybe on a weekly basis or so, just to get together and talk about our experiences. If anything at all, did you learn anything of, of, from him about writing or maybe just life in general? I don't remember him saying anything that was um, earth shattering that, you know, I kept it with me for the rest of my life. I think it was just his mannerism, his way of being, his encouragement, his um, open ear. Um, I think the fact that he gave us the opportunity to do what we did, um, that he listened to us with um, respect and interest. I think all of that um, actually speaks worlds beyond um, any kind of little kernel that he could have given me. 
uh, as a peer tutor, were you getting paid or was this uh, in the form of an internship? I don't even, it just went down on maybe a resume, but I, I we definitely didn't get paid. Um, <laughs> and, um, now we're going to do another shift okay. onto your individual sessions because, you know, also being a peer tutor, I know we, we work as a collective, but we all have our own style of doing things. So what did you try to do or accomplish in your sessions? I tried to make them relaxed and just go through it and explain, um, you know, why this doesn't work, what you should, you know, just give them tips on what they should bring out or perhaps probe them by asking questions. Um, what, do you, what do you want to convey? And what kind of message do you want to convey and how can you do that? Um, but um, I didn't rewrite the paper. That's what I was adamant about not doing that. Did you have to really work on that? Because I know for me, it was a process to have to come to just, I'm not going to write your paper. So was that, was that a process coming to master the skill of allowing them to learn for themselves while still being that assistance to them? Yeah, you have to give up a little bit of control and you have to um, recognize that it, it may not be perfect in, as, as you perceive perfection to be. Um, but um, you know, this is what the, patient, the, um, the student can, can accomplish at this point. And it's good, it's, if it's, unless it's blatantly wrong, you know, you know, I have to accept it, right? Just being in the session, what was vital to you? Like this is must happen. I think it was important that after the session, the student felt good about what had gone on, what had gone down with us, and that he or she left with a product that, um, you know, was something could be a source of pride. How long did you stay at the center? I think it was about a year or so. And then I gave it up because um, my demands became greater at, at, at my load and, um, I also had a laundromat to help run when I yes. at home and other, and other things. So, what was Brooklyn College like at that time? I just uh, remember it as being challenging. Um, I was happy when it was over. <laughs> um, I did have friends. Um, we meet every once in a while, but aside from that, it was just a place I went to to do my lectures and went to study hall or whatever it's called when you had breaks between and just went home again. Wow, yes. So I know at the time, um, I think just like now, we can say there's a there was a lot of world uh, events beyond us, much bigger than us going on. Sure. So were there were there events like that happening at, at Brooklyn College or maybe just in, in Brooklyn and then the college was involved in terms of maybe activism, protests, things that were kind of connecting to the current events at the time? There probably were, but I <laughs> but I was this nice little girl who went home to help out with her clean out the lint traps at night, you know, and do my studies. Um, if, if, uh, had I been there now and Bernie, you know, came around, I would have been there at that. You know, I don't know if you <laughs> saw that. Bernie Sanders went to Brooklyn College, yeah. Um, you know, I don't remember ever being part of a demonstration, no, at that point. Um, what did you do after Brooklyn College? Yeah, I got out a half a year. I didn't, you know, you're supposed to graduate in May or June. I, got, I graduated in January, so I did it in three and a half years. And then I got, um, a, because I had made a teaching certificate, I got a job covering someone who had to take a medical leave at Brooklyn Tech High School. And I inherited five freshman English classes, which meant I had to teach Julius Caesar and I also had to teach uh, freshman uh, writing. So I went on for a master's degree in journalism, um, but I taught on a per diem basis at Brooklyn Tech all the while while I was going for that. It took two years because it was going kind of like on a part-time basis. Then I fell into optometry. Uh, don't ask me uh, <laughs> how it came that way. And then I went full-time optometry, which I've been very happy with. So looking back, how did the writing course and, and peer tutoring, uh, your peer tutoring work in general, impact you, impact your life? Making people feel comfortable. Um, 
with themselves, um, recognizing what they can do, uh, being gentle and trying to teach them how to be a better writer, uh, or for that matter, anything, a small child you or anybody you're trying to help overcome this or something. Um, I think that's um, what made me a, I don't know, a better person, a more empathetic person. I don't know. I, I kind of felt sorry for people coming through and seeing their frustration. So that's one thing I took away from the writing center. Do you have maybe any advice for me uh, being a peer tutor or what I can learn from it or maybe what I should pay attention to more now? I think this is the same thing that what we've said all along. Don't be afraid uh, of, because um, I was afraid to start doing it. You know, it took a, for me, a lot for me to say, yes, I would do it. Um, and then also just realize, you know, they're all human. Um, we all have fears and we all have strengths, um, you know, and just to recognize that in yourself, also for other people and, um, you know, just help each other. You know, and that's what tutoring and mentoring and teaching is all about. You know, um, and not and giving up a little bit of control. It's not good to be too controlling. Um, yeah. And not that your way is always the right way. Um, I have a lot of criticism on my own writing when I do write. I think I'm a little verbose sometimes, and you know, so I yeah. So it's just you know, keep it real. <laughs>